Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Karex. We're going to be continuing on with this tutorial. Playing as Bjorn Ironside. Right now we're doing some raiding through uh, Lotharingia and through Holland. Although I'm noticing that Lotharingia is a little bit stronger than that. So we hopefully we're not poking the tiger here. Um, so we are going to take some attrition if we go this way. One of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to make money so that we can form the Kingdom of Sweden. Right. So we're down here raiding, trying to make money. Um, also, the other thing that we could look forward to doing is some of these bigger decisions, right? And one of the big ones is adopt feudal ways. And we can see that one of the things is Astro has to be an organized faith. And it's like, okay, well, what, is, what does that mean? Um, if we go over and we look at our religious tab, we, we look a little bit about the Astro religion. It is unreformed. So it's like, okay, well, there's a button down here to reform it. And when you reform it, you can come in here and you can you can customize these things and click these different sort of options. Uh, you can change the gender roles. Um, you can add a head of faith, uh, which can enact like holy wars and things like that. You can uh, you can allow uh, kin slaying, which is actually kind of crazy, um, so on and so forth. So you could actually make it acceptable to kill your kin. All kinds of crazy stuff. Make a pretty dramatic religion. You can swap out these different tenets tons of different customization here that you can do uh, to try to make a custom religion in terms of its uh, its feel and its flavor right now ours is very based on war and raiding and stuff um, but that can be changed but the thing is to do this there's requirements to do this so we need an insane amount of this piety stuff right um, and then we also need a three we need to control three astro holy sites i don't think we really even talked about the holy sites much but if we go to our faith tab here we can see that these holy sites pop up here, and there's different benefits to having these, to, to controlling these. Different benefits to controlling these. And we can see which ones are actually, we need to control three of them if we're going to be the ones to reform our religion. However, uh, if we go back to our religion tab here, there's actually a second tab here, ben uh, beliefs here, and then holy sites over here. And we can see if any of these are actually just not controlled by... Okay, that one that one is uh we have this one it's uh, but what i'm oh zealand huh interesting okay so we now control zealand the prowess per level of devotion plus one that's really really cool and we get extra uh su supply duration plus 20 percent. so we actually like i was thinking that we wanted to take this i was thinking we wanted to take this because this is zealand and it was controlled by a non astro faith but Holland looks to be actually Astro. Yeah, Holland is our our Holland is ruled by a Norse a Norseman. So that's actually kind of cool. That's actually kind of cool. One of the things is we got a bunch of stress down here. I'm just noticing. I'm just remembering we got a bunch of stress. So going on a hunt, calling a feast, things like that would be fantastic. It is of course expensive to do these things, but you know, 33 gold to reduce our 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 thing by by 44 is pretty good. Plus, this will actually going on a hunt is a good opportunity for some prestige. Of course, our king is, um, or not king, but our Jarl Bjorn is not with us on the raiding. So he can he can go off and enjoy a hunt while the rest of us continue to raid here. And the, you know, the military continues to raid abroad. Belly of the Beast. You would think it a creature from myth, perhaps God disguised in animal form. It was the largest wolf I've ever seen. Even after the beast was wounded, and the chase lasted half a day. It is still an imposing sight lying dead before me. The chieftain is as struck as is just as awestruck. I have never seen such a thing, my lord. So we can gain a hunting trophy where we get prestige per month. Now we're getting fifteen per month. I mean, an extra half isn't much. We could actually uh, bring it for our daughter, make our daughter happy by giving her like a pelt or something. She already loves us. That's fine. Uh, we could actually do something by uh, helping. Um, we can give the chief chieftain uh, credit for this, make him a little bit happy. He already likes us. We just gain two dread. Its skull will make. Uh, for a fine crown we actually have 63 dread right now i think we do that option and we go up to 80 dread i, I like that idea actually i like uh building up the dread a little bit there getting a little bit of prestige per month for five years half of prestige we can actually math out exactly how much prestige that is it's like 150 but it's over the course of like five years or something it's not much so but we do get 150 prestige just ending the uh ending the hunt just kind of raiding through, raiding through. Yep, a little bit. Of, we'll take a trish if we do that. But we can go up this. Uh, we can go up this river. But man, 
There's not a lot of wealth up here, honestly. Well, there's some. There's some, right? I don't know. It's kind of tricky. Oh, we're trying to sway this guy. And it looks like there's an opportunity while we're swaying him. My attempts to align the chieftain to my interests have found an opportunity. I think I could argue that our goals are, in fact, the same. As I uh, dictate my next letter... So we have an 82% chance to pass this and actually, wow, he gained, we gained 75 prestige and he gains 50 opinion of us. That would just be a boom, boom, boom right there. Yeah, I think we take that because we have such a fantastic diplomacy skill. We have a good odds of, of, of accomplishing that. So let's, we, he's actually at 100 now. Let's move on to somebody else. Uh, this guy's not quite at 100. Let's, let's, but, let's butter him up. Everybody loves us. Everybody loves us. We might actually have this guy working on a foreign affairs, but his... Yeah, let's just have him working on foreign affairs. Not that big of a deal, everybody. Everybody likes us right here. Everybody likes us. It's kind of is what it is. Hmm. Well, this is decent. 17 gold there. But man, we're not finding a lot of money down here. I will say that much. We got 59 gold. And I feel like we've been down here for a while. So we can go up to 132 gold before, um, before we're full. So we're actually raiding our own people over here, which is kind of like, whoops, you know. Decent amount of money over here. If no, it's going to take attrition to do that, though. 18 in Amsterdam. Over here is 18 as well, so that's good. Neighbors are losing wars. I don't know what's going on there exactly. Whoa, that's not good. That's not good. Because we want... we Yeah, this, this area right here, right, is part of... we we They, they took two provinces here. Um, two of that duchy. We, we want that for Sweden. So we're going to have to actually fight these guys for a piece of that when he's much stronger than this guy down here. Like, this guy's in some other war right now. Holy cow. Oh, oh that's actually our own kingdom. Our own vassals going in there and trying to take a piece. That actually is okay. That actually doesn't hurt us. If he succeeds, that can expand our nation without our, our influence. So here we can actually spend prestige. And re remember, we, it's not that the prestige is valuable. It's that we're trying to build the prestige to get the fame. But once we have the prestige, we can spend it. That's not a problem. Encourage, uh, that increases our development. We are trying to increase our development. So I think that's fine. Spend a little bit of prestige, make him happy and some other things. I think that's totally fine. It's only six bucks if we go that way. It's 10 bucks if we go this way. Someone else is actually raiding down here. Let's do this city over here. And then maybe we can uh, we can go do... Uh, we can pillage Zealand, the holy site. Call it, a, call it a bit of a pilgrimage or something. Looks like Jorvik's doing pretty well over here. Our, uh, our brother. Or, or Hapton, our brother. Who's in charge of the Jorvik... Um, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we don't want to engage these guys, so let's make sure we go around them. Looks like they're raiding something we've already raided, the poor suckers. Or are they actually at war? They might actually be at war. It doesn't... Uh, yeah, it does look like... It looks like, yeah, uh, uh, Aachen down here is, is attacking. Hmm. We might have to come in here and secure Zealand for ourselves just so we can make sure to protect that. We're actually full up. Cool. We're full up. Let's go home. Time to go home and drop off the money. We got 125 gold coming back. We do need to make quite a bit more gold. I think one of the things we said we wanted to do, right, was we wanted to... Oh, we already have it. So minus 20% title creation is 20% cheaper. So when it comes in here and it says titles can be created, we just need to make one title and then we can make uh, the Kingdom of, of Sweden. So these, though, we just need to make these different titles. It's only 75... It's, 70, it's uh, quite a bit cheaper. It's only 75 gold now. I think we want to make these. That'll also give us prestige. Okay, let's grab this. And then let's go to this. Um, and now it says we can make the Kingdom of Sweden, which is pretty awesome. We're going to wait a little bit on that, actually. Because we do need to make all these duchies. We need to have like a proper sort of de jure uh, structure. Okay. Now we're illustrious. We're getting tons of prestige for this. 
So we do need to save up a little bit. We need 150 gold in order to, to make uh, Sweden. Making quite a bit of money with these extra titles, as you can see. But it is going to tell us now that we have too many... Is it? It's not telling us that we have too many titles. I guess we could just hold on to all of them? The heck? Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it's only once we make a, a kingdom of Sweden that it's going to complain that we have too many. Because um, usually you want to have two of them. It's only going to let you have two of them. But here it seems like we're uh, we're good to go here. That's kind of nice. Uh, what we could do is we could go back raiding to, to get 150 more gold for Sweden. Officially Sweden. Oh, 50, 53 gold in Canterbury. Let's go, 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 go. Let's go, 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 go. Time to raid. Our knights are pretty strong. Um, I, it, we kind of do need to replenish the armies, but if we can come down here and get 150 gold raiding Wessex, and there's some big money over here. There's some big money over here in Canterbury. So let's get the heck over there. Making 20 prestige per month. That is insane. That is insane. Being impatient actually gives us an extra 20% gain, huh? It's kind of interesting. Lawfully in prison, this guy. This guy is a vassal of ours. Uh, who is he? He's in charge of just that one thing. Um, hmm. It's going to make him a little bit upset if we do this, but quite honestly, uh, he likes us so much that he could, we could probably grab him and then ransom him out, and he probably wouldn't hate us that much. Yeah, we can ransom the guy now. 50 gold? Sure. Perfect. It's going to be a little dodgy. I mean, Alfred is strong, and Alfred has about equal amount of troops as us right now. We can negotiate a bunch of alliances. Um, 230 levies, 100 levies, 200 levies, 150 levies. I, 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 yeah, no. None of these guys are, none of these guys are alliances we particularly care to make. They would benefit from it more than we would benefit from having them as an ally. So actually, we're over here. So we got the one that we wanted here to make it cheaper to make those titles. But now I'm actually kind of wondering if we want to... So fellow vassal opinion. The vassals already love us, right? It's not a big deal. Uh, can, we can propose one alliance without a marriage. I mean, that's kind of neat. So that we could propose our own alliance to someone that's actually strong and would be worth doing that. You were able to use uh, the forced vassalization Casas Belly. That could be kind of interesting, to be honest. You know, I actually kind of want to grab that to see what that is and, and what kind of um, wars that, that gives us the option to, to do. We know we can declare tons of wars. Uh, we know there's council members. Uh, there's people that would prefer to have council positions. No big deal there. But after we raid Canterbury and do a little bit of raiding through Wessex, I think we'll actually be able to form the Kingdom of Sweet. Uh-oh. What is this? Wait, what? Wait, what? These guys are actually attacking us? How did this happen? Is this like an independence war or something? No, they're just they're just coming at us, huh? Okay, so apparently we're we're at war. <laughs> so we need to uh, we need to grab. I'm I'm not gonna leave without. I refuse to leave without raiding Canterbury. 56 gold on Canterbury right now. This is a Christian holy site. That's why that's so high. They are going to temporarily kind of be winning the war until we get back. Um, but yeah. So now that we're going to raid that, then we'll send them back home. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna siege this, unfortunately. Is that the actual war goal? Yikes. That is the war goal. So they're definitely going to be winning... They're definitely going to be winning the war until we can get back here and win some battles and stuff like that. They have very few knights, which is actually kind of interesting. And the knights are quite a bit weaker. That's a, that's a big deal, but they do have heavy infantry, which is pretty intense. No, he's not sick anymore. Growing strong. Bjorn Bjornsson is no longer sick. He's lost the trait sickly. We were kind of hoping that... Uh, that that kid was not going to make it, to be honest, because his traits are not particularly amazing. He is curious. So he is actually willing to uh, potentially have a life of uh, a, a strong diplomacy. We'll, we'll educate him ourselves. 
because we're pretty good in the ways of diplomacy and we can have him like father, like son. Although in all honesty, I'm hoping for a son to come along that's going to have a little bit better uh, genetics. Oh. Wait, what? Our grandson. This is our grandson. Our grandson is 16 years old. Okay, okay. Our grandson is not particularly amazing in anything and has no interesting genetic traits. We're going to go to the filter tab. And I'm going to filter for inheritable traits. I want to make sure he marries someone. And we might also want to filter for someone that's like relatively similar age as this guy. Like no different than like... Uh, no different than 15 years difference. So this person is pretty. That's a genetic trait that could be uh, useful. We have some people here that are quick. Beaconed. 50% fertility and extra life expectancy. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. This person's beautiful, though. Um, we could actually just sort by sort of like um, some of all traits and, and try to see kind of like who just has sort of good base traits and stuff as well. If any of those people would be intelligent or geniuses or anything. This person right here is a genius. Let's, let's, oh man. We could only, you know, there we go. This is a little five-year-old genius right here. Oh, he's got a lisp. It is what it is. Uh, hopefully the kids have, are geniuses without lisps, but. Of course, it's going to be years, right? It's not too much of an age difference. They're just going to wait like 10 years for... So it's a betrothal, right? We just bet... uh, we... It's a betrothal between those two people. And uh, presumably, we just got to wait a few... Uh... We just got to wait a few years there. Our son is actually in the... Uh, we'll be in the battles here. So we're going to come up here. And we're going to engage... Um, these troops here in the uh, in the forest. We have good men at arms. They have like an equal amount of men at arms. Oh, they're gonna get away. That's kind of annoying. That's kind of annoying. I guess we'll just work on this siege. We came back with money and stuff. I think we can form the kingdom of Sweden now. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. There's no reason not to do that, really. Let's do it. We have formed the Kingdom of Sweden. So we have a decision in order to enact a new type of succession law, which is a Scandinavian... Adopt a new type of succession law. It's called the Scandinavian elect Elective. And what it does is it actually makes the Kingdom of Sweden, instead of being inherited, it'll be elected by someone. But the people that will be eligible um, will be people of our dynasty, um, essentially our kids are, are likely, our, our firstborn is going to get most of the support, but we can still manipulate it to maybe, uh, elect a younger child that has better traits. So he actually gives us more actual control right now. It's fine. We don't really need to do anything crazy right now. It also makes the vassals very happy when you, when you make an elective, because you give them political power to help determine who the heir is going to be. So right now everybody loves us though, right? So there's no pressure to do that. I think it also builds prestige and stuff when you enact it too. What's going on here? Social manipulation. I think we've seen an event like this. Uh, we could just sort of appease this guy in a different sense. He's deceitful. So this is some of the work. You know, he's he's cynical and deceitful and patient. So this guy's kind of a, kind of annoying. Commenting on his his sharp uh, sharply legs will throw him off. Nope, it didn't work. That's fine. That's fine. So they're back to sieging this. What we'll do is we'll siege this first, right? Three months until this siege is done. Seven months until their siege is done. So we'll siege this one. We'll swing back around, scare them off of there unless they want to fight or we'll fight them there. And then we'll come over and we'll work on their, uh, we'll work on their capital. So we could see if we have any interesting people in the court right now. We don't have a huge amount of money. Uh, this guy is actually a military engineer, which makes him a better sieger, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this guy is a 20 prowess character. We want to recruit this guy. Absolutely. Ooh, eight gold to bring that guy in. Let's go. Let's go. 
what we could do is we could invite new champions so that we can keep refining and improving the the grouping of knights that we have. Oh, this guy's working on levies. I don't think we want him to do that anymore. I think we want him to train commanders. We have plenty of levies. Disrupting religious relations. That's fine. I think everything is fine right now. Oh, we actually have an extra holding. Because we're a king, we actually get to hold on to one more province. So we can we can directly hold on to one more. So when we actually, if we attack uh, for this right here, if we attack for this right here, we can we can take this, but then we can keep it ourselves, which would be nice. Let's see if these guys get scared. They should get scared. The AI usually can kind of see you coming, and they won't get like trapped in a battle. Oh oh oh! That random group right there is actually going to cause it. So that are we going to catch them? No, they still stuck. Are we going to same day them? They got out of there just in time. That's so funny. That is so funny. Okay, we're just going to start going back and, and sieging them out. Because they apparently don't want to uh, engage us. Yeah, the AI is really kind of annoying when we still play. Yeah, okay, see, now it says we have too many duchies. Uh, reason being... Um, yeah, reason being that we um, that we're now a king. We're now a king. So let's go over to this guy. So he's a charger here. Let's give him the duchy over this area. No, wrong one. Visby, that's right. Uh, that's Visby. Let's go grab someone in here. That we can grant this title to. Let's go grant a local lord in this area here. Why does everyone dislike us right now? Oh, too many, yeah, they're, they're upset because we have too many duchies. That's what well, we're giving them away here, dude. And we're giving them the you, man. Nothing to be upset about, dude. We'll hold on to this one for now. Because we can hold on to one extra one. And then but what I think we're going to do is we're going to take the Duchy of Smallland. We're going to take the Duchy of Smallland. Assuming who owns this one, actually? Who owns the Jarldom? This guy does right here. So presumably if we swoop in here and we take this for ourselves, we'll be able to, to form that and, and usurp that or take that or whatever. It's going to be seven months until that siege is done. These guys are just kind of randomly running around, it seems. Um, they're getting on a boat. They might go for a capital. Or they might circle all the way back around and try to engage these guys on their capital and defend their own capital. they got a couple different wars going on right now. Unfortunately, this war right here is with, uh, with uh, the Danes. So we don't want them to lose more land to the Danes. So they're too busy attacking us so they can't even defend their own land, dude. Come on, think about that for a second, man. we got people, we got uh, knights coming into our court. 14 prowess, that's pretty good. We'll hire that guy for a couple bucks. One prowess, that's not good. This guy's 16 prowess. He's gallant. That's nice. These guys are cheap to recruit. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm digging that. Yeah, we were making so much prestige. Illustrious is really that. That is the, uh, the critical threshold that gives us that really powerful CB where we can take entire duchies at a time. Um, so we'll be able to actually conquer this guy entirely once the truce is over. Now, the funny thing is because he attacked us, I think it's a one-directional truce. I don't think we actually have to... Uh, we can attack him immediately. I don't think we have to wait the other way around. In fact, what would probably be really smart is if we attacked... If we got out of this war and attacked him... If we got out of this war and then attacked him before um, this guy's able to win his war... No! Our wife was pregnant. But our daughter is now in Valhalla. Was it a daughter? Did we know it was going to be a daughter? Either way, there was a miscarriage. Sad times. Sad times. Who's this dude? We could just vassalize this guy. You know, I'm actually... We could vassalize that guy. Man. I was kind of tempted to conquer him, but fine. We'll vassalize him. You want to join the ranks? Join up, buddy. See, this funny thing is this guy would have been primed for being vassalized too. Except for he's just being kind of a jerk. 
clearly. I really want to get out of this war so that we can declare our own war against these guys. Oh, champion showing up to our court. 20 prowess. These guys are, this is fantastic. Fantastic. We're going to have like nobody less than 20 here. So we're going to have to disband our army and rebuild it. And we'll probably have a bunch of big numbers here. I can imagine. Oh, are you guys going to engage? That would be amazing. Good engagement. They got him off the capital. Unfortunately, it looks like these guys might actually lose that battle, though. Oh, nope, they got some reinforcements or something. Mercenaries at the last second, something. Also, this guy's got a good... We, we noticed that he had strong men-at-arms, right? He had strong men-at-arms. We can watch this battle. Yeah, he's got more men-at-arms. He's even got cavalry in there. That's insane. I think at this point, though, to be honest, I don't think any of this stuff is really necessary for us. I think we actually could go here and we could start... Our, our children receive extra skill points. We could start making friends and start working on that. So let's start befriending somebody. Like, we would be, we could befriend our, our... Let's befriend our wife. Sounds like a good idea. We have a 100% chance to do that. So friends, basically, if we go down this route of family hierarchy, if we go down this tree, eventually we get, we get skill points for every friend we have. So our character can get really, really uh, good at, at, at the different uh, the skills here. We can get better at these different things here uh, by, by having a lot of friends. It's just random, though. You don't know if you're going to get stewardship or learning or whatever, but, but any of that stuff would be critically important. Our learning skill is so bad. Okay, we need, we need our wife helping us with stewardship, I think, or uh, learning. Because this is just absolutely abysmal. We don't need the little bit of help that she's giving us with entry or stewardship. It doesn't it doesn't help us that much. And we are obviously have fantastic diplomacy and uh, and such already on its own. So we could fight these guys. A friend. I don't want to pay money for this. No, we'll just keep rolling as is. We're not gonna. We're not gonna boost it. We already have a hundred percent chance to succeed. We don't need to go crazy with it. Unfortunately, it's gonna be a minute before this war is over, because uh, because we have to siege one more thing. We have to we have to get their capital, or we have to engage them, or something. Well, they'd let us just fight them. Let's just fight them. That should go up to hundred percent after we win this battle. They're, see, they're willing to fight us because it's defensive terrain. It's the best they can do. It's the best they can do. Holy cow, do they actually have the advantage here? Was it was that backwards? We won that, but the way it made it seem like we were actually like losing that or something. So let's disband our army. But now what I want to do is I want to see if we can just attack these guys. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. But we can attack these guys for this duchy here. And if we did this, it would actually allow us to sort of cut off uh, the Danes' uh, the Danes sort of uh, attack on us. Force vassalization. That it's five hundred. Yeah, this is five hundred prestige. That's that's not a no. I don't I don't particularly love that. We have tons of prestige, but but the guy, he's at war with us, right? He doesn't like us. I don't think he's going to be a loyal subject. I think we want to take the duchy. We're going to go here to change objective. This is the duchy it's selected. No, we want this duchy here. We're going to take that, and then we're going to be able to in, in, like add our own people that we trust, our own loyal servants. We're going to be able to add them to this war. So let's go over here, and let's raise everybody up. So we have so much prestige, we need more men-at-arms. And we also need to build buildings, right? Because we have gold and we have prestige now. So let's come over here. Let's build some of these economic buildings like the marketplaces. Wait, why is it costing so much more? Construction slowdown, plus 20%. Is that everywhere in the entire kingdom? Just in our capital? Okay, let's build marketplace there. And a marketplace over here, but I do not like that. How long does that last? Two more years. Okay, I, I do want to make sure that we're building a lot in our capital. See, if we look at our knights now, it's like, oh, big numbers there. Big numbers. 20s, 30s. Good stuff. So 
So now we need to go around and um, and and siege out. Basically, we need to beat up the Danes. That's fine. We don't care about uh, scheme power because let's actually, you know, what? let's raise everybody else here. How many people are here to be raised? Wait, what? I thought we had like 3,000 levies. Where'd they all go? What the heck? I'm not sure what happened to our levies. It said that we were going to have like 3,000 plus the men at arms, but we only have the 2,000 here. Huh. I don't know if something happened there or not. Sometimes your levies need to like re-update. It could be that we had 3,000 when we had all those duchies, and then once we gave the duchies away, it went down a little bit or something? I don't know. Yeah, let's transfer this guy. He's in the wrong, uh, he's in the wrong duchy. So we, we're just transferring the, the subjugation from, from, to someone else and making the other guy happy. So do it later. War on people and people are angry. Yep. We don't need any people are, uh, people expect to have council positions basically is what's going on there. Uh, what does our council look like these days? Our steward's still not particularly great. There's no one better than this guy go. No. We could apply this guy. We could apply this guy as our spy master. He's a little bit better, but I'm not particularly complaining. Oh, look at this guy right here. He's a 27. Let's add in. He's our friend. Let's add him on. He's a 27 learned person. That's going to be fantastic. There we go. We should be friends with our wife now. Is that true? Wife and friend. Yep. Nice. So we can, of course, become friends with our, our kids as well. Um... We could also just become friends with our different council members. Like, let's become friends with our spy master. That sounds like a good idea. 100% chance to succeed in all this stuff. Actually, I guess we've been going a little bit here. But essentially what we could do is we could come down to here, take this big old chunk of land. We've lost a little bit of, of the kingdom of Sweden, right? We've lost three provinces down here to De sort of the Danes' advance. Denmark doesn't exist as, as a unity, as like a, a unified area. But uh, Siegfried, Snake in the Eye, this is our brother over here. This is our brother over here, and he's actually taking chunks of land. Not from us, but land that is rightfully ours. So, you know, Bjorn's going to probably continue to try to unify Sweden, uh, the kingdom of Sweden, but then we can look outside of that too, right? Uh, and so on and so forth. So thank you, everybody, for watching this episode. I think for the most part, to be honest, we're just kind of... Um, there's, there's a lot of things that take a lot of time, right? It takes a lot of time to become feudal. It takes a lot of time to reform your faith. It's something you really have to, a character itself, like like the, the character that's going to reform the faith is probably going to be a learned character, right? But what we could do is we could set up for a future character like that by taking over some of these holy sites like Zealand. And like, uh, like this is a holy site here too. And then there's a holy site up here. So we, so we could go around and collect these holy sites right now while we're uh, preparing to reform the faith in the future and then customize religion in, in a future episode, in a future a future character, right? But thank you everybody for, for watching this episode. And like I said, at this point, we're just kind of playing the game. I, I think honestly, this game, uh, uh, Crusader Kings 3 is a fantastic one to get started with. And it's actually a little bit easier to get into and get going with than like Europa de Versailles uh, 4, for example, um, which is it just another game we made a sort of tutorial series for. I don't feel like there's too many things. There's a lot of details in, in, and nuance and, and creativity and things you can do in this game and stuff that ways that you can customize your experience and your playthrough and your character. But for the most part, the mechanical systems, the flow of the game, you know, managing your council, managing your military, managing your resources. We've kind of talked about all this stuff, going to war, you know, war and peace and raiding and so on and so forth, the building buildings and developing your country. Kind of talked about all this stuff. Uh, so, you know, we'll probably just keep doing a few more episodes and just playing through and just highly commentating everything that we do. But for the most part, I think you guys are ready to go. Let me know if there's any questions or if I took something for granted or if I glossed over anything. I'd really appreciate that because we're probably going to need to take it, do it, do a second take on this to be honest and try to do something to do better right this is our first attempt so it's a process i need to get better 
at, uh, at explaining these systems in, in a logical way and building that foundation for the viewer. Uh, so thanks everybody. If you have questions, please leave them down below. I will not uh, miss them. I will read them and answer them. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. I will see you guys in the next one.